Good morning, everyone. As I think everybody is aware of the fact that uh, recently the loka the bill was withdrawn um, by the CM, and so there is a little bit of a uh, lot of discussion on that subject. It was be not been withdrawn, but it was there was uh, this thing that there's going to be. Yes. So uh, there is just there is a little bit of a concern with the citizens and civil society over here, and we would be just discussing that. So um, I would just. Uh, there's no formal um, introduction or anything, but I would like to now ask uh, Advocate Satish Sonak to express the concerns. Honorable Justice Higde, I'll not describe you more except saying that at present we treat you as hope for India. In Goa, as the rest of the Indians, you have been waiting with an eager wait for both for you to continue to serve your motherland India and for this function. The concern, we have a peculiar situation in Goa. When I talk of concern, I'm not really talking about the Lokpal bill. Uh, when the Lokpal bill was pending in the parliament, it was in the columns of power, way back, perhaps in 2003, and all honorable speaker, Vidhap Singh Rane will correct me, a bill was introduced here for the Lok Ayukta. Quite earlier, those things were there, when, uh, during the pendency of those things. Like we thought that we would get a local Lok Ayukta in Goa. At some point of time, the bill appears to have been passed by our assembly also. It was sent to the central government uh, with certain objections or suggestions or whatever it is. Thereafter, the people are wondering what has happened to that bill. Some people ask, they are concerned to know whether the central government will know the entire bill is rejected, yes or no, or whether only certain suggestions were made and those suggestions could have been amended. Thereafter, the people of Goa are under impression that uh, the government is willing to have a law, but by way of what? Are you going to willing to amend that bill? Or are you going to bring a new law altogether? And if you have to bring a new law of the Lok Ayukta in Goa, then whether you have to compulsorily withdraw that earlier <coughs> bill, or you can take a viewpoint that no, since it was not assented by the president, no need of withdrawing that. I am not giving any answers, but the people of Goa are willing, to, I mean, they are concerned to know these answers, because there is no official position which has emerged from anybody. There is a lot of loose talk. Everybody gives us different answers. Then the next question that arises in our mind is, now suppose the Lokpal bill is enacted in the parliament. Either the Jana Lokpal bill as suggested by Justice Egde and others, or the government's version of the bill, the government sponsored bill, whichever bill that is there, what would be the implication of that central Lokpal bill on the state bill in Goa for the Lok Ayukta? Because one view that we have in our mind is, some people are saying that see the central Lokpal bill that will also take care of the Lok Ayukta in Goa. Like earlier you had different uh, right to information bills in different states, but when the central enactment came and entirely uh, all those, uh, the central enactment uh, overrided the local laws and there was one act. So whether that will take care of the Goan thing, that is one question that is uppermost in our mind and that is what we are asking. Second, assuming that such an uh, thing is possible in future. We do not know when that bill will see the light of the when that bill will be passed. Whether it will be challenged before the courts, it might. It is, uh, we hope it will be passed, but we are keeping our fingers crossed because it has to also see the touchstone of the judiciary. Also, it might take time. In the meanwhile, if we don't have a Lok Ayukta, even if we are going to get a Lok Ayukta in future, if in the meanwhile we are not going to have a Lok Ayukta, what happens? I mean, for how long we are going to wait? That is yet another concern. The next question is, either our local government is thinking of amending that law or they are thinking of uh, bringing a new legislation altogether. Either way, like on the central government pattern, since, you all, uh, the, since the central government in their wisdom now rightly decided to adopt that 50-50 formula, are the legislators in Goa, is the government in Goa also willing to adopt the 50-50 formula for civil society? When you are going to, either you make amendments or you bring a new bill, are you going to take the views of the people into consideration in Goa while drafting the new bill? That is yet another concern that we have. Other questions that would happen is, the draft which you are going to, take, uh, going to do, 
is it as good as the Karnataka draft? Or like Justice Egde would be perhaps, uh, he has been voicing his opinions that some improvements are required there also. Are you going to get those improvements for us over here? Have we done any comparative study? If some amendments are required, is there any draft of the amendment prepared by this government? If a new bill is required, is there a new bill which is prepared by this government? These are some of the concerns. On our behalf, on behalf of some of the civil society people over here, we have been writing to the government and the suggestions that I'll just end up in a minute, some suggestions that we were giving about the new, the basic concern that we were having, we were uh, writing to the government that government should convene an all-party meeting on the new Loka Yukta bill in the last week of April or first week of May 2011. I'm talking of a Goa scenario. Second, simultaneously the government would organize a multi-stakeholder meeting with representatives of civil society NGOs on the same. This process is to be completed by May 10th, 2011. Third, the government would issue a notification to constitute joint drafting committee on the lines of central committee. This needs to be issued by May 15, 2011. Fourth, the first draft of the bill prepared by the joint committee by June 15, 2011 would be thrown open for public comments for not less than 15 days. Fifth, the government would then finalize the bill and introduce it in the monsoon session of the Goa Assembly by middle of July 2011. Lastly, after receiving presidential consent and publication in Gazette, the government would take rapid steps to establish the office of Lokayukta in Goa before Liberation Day, that is December 19, 2011. Summing up, this is one thing that is required, but in the meanwhile, we had an enactment, the uh, Public Man's Enquiries Against Act. There was a commission under that act which was a three-member commission. The uh, members are uh, retired, I quote, judges also on it. Now, what happened? In the meanwhile, the local government said that we are going to bring the Lokayukta bill in Goa. We are going to do that act. So, uh, when those members retired, they straightway wound up that commission. Today, nobody is appointed on that commission. So, one forum is close to her. No, and at the same time, the other forum of Lokayukta has not been open to us. So, if you are closing one door, without opening another door for us. Now, in the meanwhile, till the Lokayukta come, even for the Lokayukta bill to come, it is going to take a long time. Why, why doesn't the government, I'm just raising a question, why doesn't the government think of reviving that commission? Whether good or bad, appoint those members, or what, I, I'm raising a question. Now, these are the questions which people in Goa are asking. There are various other topics over here, I'll just... Um, End up, uh, there are different uh, participants in this uh, very... Mr. Sahadmi, I, yeah. I think uh, um, Mr. Rane would like to answer your question. Sure, sure. Yes. So that is it, sir. We'll have it straight from the horse's mouth. First of all, let me thank Justice Hegre, who has been doing a commendable job in Karnataka. And all of you who are here, on behalf of the International Centre, I must say that this is very important. I just came from a place where I took the collector with me where illegal constructions are going on. We have got the Town and Country Planning Act. We have got conversion laws, revenue laws. Yet, you will see in thousands in the guise of poverty, but somebody takes money and allows the person to build a house. Now, we are talking of low kayukta, which will be at the higher levels. But what about the lower levels also you have to take care? This is something that I would like to state here. Right from, we have what we call the institution of komunidads. You should see some of the sarpanchas and the people in the urban areas making plenty of money. You could see also some of the fellows in Kalangut or Porvarim, you know who I'm talking of. I need not, everybody knows Goa is a very small place. So we have to see, although let me state here, the corruption tops, starts from top, not from bottom. If the top is strong enough, people are mean business. And in our country, unlike Egypt or Libya, who had dictatorships, or kings, or what have you, we have a democracy. But democracy in itself is not enough. By getting elected, making right promises, that's not going to be enough. We have to deliver the goods, otherwise you'll have Naxalites pointing uh, guns at your head, foreheads. This is what's going to happen. Or you'll have the 
Mao's coming here. We have to think about it very seriously. People's employment, looking at the poor, this is something that we have to worry about. We may call ourselves a democracy, but are we functioning? And that is why this movement that is taking place all over the country. Uh, the um, gentleman, uh, what was his name, my fellow, um, Mr. Hazare, was only an excuse for the youth. Hazare was only an excuse for him to make that noise and everybody join in. Because we are tired of this. We brought Right to Information Act. We were the first state to bring it. Then the government of India brought an act. We did not have, we did not know what was drugs and things like that. We brought uh, this, uh, even uh, an act against the drugs. We made seven years penalty. Then now it was capital punishment. Government of India enacted that. Similarly, we brought an act called Preve Public Men's Prevention of Corruption Act. We appointed three people. Afterwards, I think in 2003, 2000, this Loka Yukta model bill was circulated in the assembly. I was in the opposition. My colleague, Mr. Parikar, in the assembly was uh, the chief minister. We deliberated over it because it was referred to the select committee. And based on that model bill was sent to us, and based on that model bill. In the meantime, we forgot about appointing these uh, uh, commission on the, the three people were to be appointed. They were not appointed. And it went on that way, and we sat on this Loka Yukta bill. Loka Yukta bill was not introduced in the assembly till 2007. When I took over, in 2005, again I sat on that select committee. Mind you, this was the model bill sent by government. Only change that we made in the uh, Lokayukta bill was that the Lokayukta was supposed to be appointed in consul uh, consultation with the Justi Chief Justice of the High Court, the Speaker and the Chief Minister. The Speaker was removed because he's usually a party man. And Leader of the Opposition was put. This is the only amendment in that. And the bill was brought before the House in sometime in 2006 with all the amendments, etc. Whatever this. The, suddenly some members said, both from the house that we want to make suggestions. Usually no suggestions are made to the uh, 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 bill brought out by the is mini house which is the select committee. Then we gave them four or five months. Again the assembly met and finally I said see not a single Amendment has come to us. No, no suggestion has come, sir. We have passed the bill. In 2007, we passed the bill. Now, more than four years have passed. We're in 2011. Government of India, somehow it was felt, I don't know, a model bill, a bill based on, you know, I mean, somebody. Uh, the bill was part of the House because we passed the bill in the Assembly and it was sent to the Governor. Somehow, Governor felt that it should be uh, have uh, consent of the President. So it was sent for the President's assent. And then there was a football. Bill was going from this minister to that ministry. I went and inquired once or twice. I have written letters to the Prime Minister, I have written letters to the Home Minister. I have the copies in there. I took over as a speaker in 2007, later on. I wrote letters that this is a part of the House. Now, after four years, the Chief Minister wrote to me that he wanted to withdraw the bill. 
I don't know for what reason, because there were so many suggestions sent by the government of India. Mind you, this was a model bill that was sent to us. Now, I have seen part of the, uh, uh, seeing, uh, the act, Loka Yukta Act of Karnataka also, where, but I don't know, I mean, Justice Hegre can enlighten us on it, whether the Loka Yukta is empowered to file a case against the concerned defaulter, prosecute. Yeah. Huh? Or, do you, no, can he start proceedings against them? Now, this is something that you won't know. And um, how it has worked, you can enlighten us on that also, because uh, we have read many times in the newspapers how he has been very active with it. I don't see any reason when such a bill with suggestions and all that come back, it should come back to us as the House. But then it, there are instances where permission of the House is given to withdraw the bill. The bill is now with me as a Speaker. Uh, the Chief Minister could have withdrawn the bill. But uh, I thought that it should be discussed in the House. You see, before. And unfortunately, House could not function because uh, of some, uh, you know, whatever, whatever happened. The House could not function for three days. And on the last day, the leader of the opposition raised the issue. You see, I asked him, why didn't you raise the You could have discussed this. Unfortunately, it has not been done by the House. So the matter stands there. Because these things are to be deliberated if any suggestions are, once the House passes the bill, then it should be let to, left to the House to accept the, uh, the amendments from the, whatever the uh, Central Ministry has suggested. If these amendments come from Home Ministry, refer it to, because then somebody told me, I do not want to name the person, withdraw why should you uh, have the um, bureaucracy under that? Because the chief uh, minister comes, the chief secretary also comes under the Loka Yukta Act and many others. So that the, there is a vigilance department and other things handling that. Why do you want to have the bureaucracy? But I think the bureaucracy should also be under the. Now on that, I think in Delhi they are not... They don't want this. This is my feeling. So that is where the thing matter stands. I think uh, you'd like to respond to that just a little bit. Justice Santosh Hegde, Honorable Speaker of Goa Assembly, Pratap Singh Ranaji, all the veterans who are here to participate in today's discussion. I would at the outset would like to request you not to treat me or consider me or look from a point of view that I am a politician. Of course, I am a representative of people, uh, but I have the privilege of being the member of a standing committee of law and justice, which deals with many important legislations. And I have been taking keen interest in all the legislation, in all humility, I would like to say, when I was member of Lok Sabha in 84-89, I was the person, member of parliament, who had introduced highest number of bills. In fact, Dalyavati came next to me. So, so to say that I have been taking a lot of interest. And at, at the outset, I would like to congratulate Honorable Speaker, who was then the Chief Minister. Today we are speaking of Loka Ikta. But our bill of Loka Ikta was there as early as 1988. Maybe the rules were framed a little later. Maybe that it was not named as Loka Ikta. I have compared the provisions. There is absolutely no difference between any of the Loka Ikta bills which are in circulation, which are in force. Hardly there will be any difference. So we, we take proud in having the Loka Ikta bill in, as early as 1988. There are two reasons 
why ultimately that uh, gave a hand to that legislation is this. One is that three members retired, nobody thought of appointing them and thought of appointing them because the idea was that we are going to have now a low the bill, full-fledged. There was a mistake that till until a low the bill was brought into force, this should not have been allowed to die down. That was the mistake. But uh, nevertheless, we should take a proud go as such that we ventured into this low the bill. Secondly, as Mr. Rani has pointed out himself, that we were one of the first states to have right to information act. Government of India brought it later. In fact, the second state, first was some other state, whatever. Uh, so that is the thing. So, and in my opinion, the Right to Information Act gives every citizen the status of a member of parliament or a MLA. Why I am saying this? There is a provision there that no information which can be denied to a member in the Assembly of Parliament cannot be denied to a citizen under Right to Information Act. So his status as far as seeking information is concerned is that of an MLA or an MP. So that is the relevance of that. Now sir, in, in this legislation normally uh, Lokpal or Lokayut, people perhaps, I don't know, have an impression that this is such a law that you punish a person and within months you will ha hang him on the next pillar. I mean, that sort of stringent provisions the Lokpal or Lokayukta bill has, this is the impression of the people. That's why people who are worried about corruption, they have gathered in strength. They feel that next day the person will be hanged on the nearest pole. But that is not the case because this is only recommendatory type of legislation, you can get some water, recommendatory type of legislation because one is that you can order prosecution if there is a prima facie evidence. Number is it maintains its status that anybody can charge of contempt if he disrespect the commission or loka yukta as the case may be. But one important power which is vested in the loka yukta is this that when evidence comes, whether a prosecution is, comes later, but Lokayukta or Lokpal can order that minister, whoever is, to vacate the chair. This is one of the most powerful weapon in the hands of a Lokayukta. Prosecution will be done by some other courts, punishment will be done by some other court. But this is one of the... And therefore, in fact, <laughs> I am, of course, sometimes I, I feel why our <laughs> justice could not uh, effectively implement it. I am not saying that, but I would have been happy if you could uh, use this provision effectively in the state uh, where is a local actor. Secondly, one is important is, this, regarding, this is regarding the ministers or high ecology, etc. But what about the, our normal law of prevention of corruption? With Rajivji, during his time, he had taken the trouble of getting it properly amended. And this is one of the best legislation. It has to be used properly. 1988 Prevention of Corruption, which is our main law of the land, which can tackle any situation. That law has to be implemented because what Mr. Rani pointed out just now, things Lokayukta, etc. will not come into picture there. Their simple prevention of corruption at 1980 has to be utilized. Now, why this has remained unutilized? In my humble opinion, two things. One is nobody is coming forward to file a simple FIR before police station. In fact, under this act, higher police officer has been provided for people don't come forward to file an FIR, just like in normal cases, they don't file a FIR. Secondly, there is a second provision. One is, this is for trapping. Trapping, somebody asking for money, he can be trapped you know, if a FIR is filed. Second thing is, disproportionate assets. But supposing you have not done anything, but you know that certain certain officer has collected huge money, 
a read can be put and he's simple, his accounts can be taken and assets, if they are disproportionate, he can be hauled up. There are two different types of provisions which are there, but which are not used in this year. I remember before becoming member of Lok Sabha in 1984, I was appointed by Goa government as special public prosecutor to deal only with corruption cases. And I am telling you, I was there for about three years. I had three cases. No fourth case came to my house. Nobody was filing, and cases were not coming at all. I was there with these three cases all the time. So this was the status. I appealed to all NGOs, public men, we are doing a good job in the country, to see that normal law is enforced and is brought in force. And supposing one police officer is not acting on a fire file, I won't say perhaps the government also, let us say for political reasons, may not direct the police officer. But then one small PIL may, will make, make the police officer to act within minutes. And therefore, this law can be put into force effectively. Other thing is, see, there is a new legislation which is coming now. It's popularly called as Whistleblower Act. I am also a, a member of the select committee on that. This legislation is also going to go a long way in dealing with corruption, side by side with 1988 Corruption Act. This law, simply speaking, most of you people who are there in the field may be knowing that if an employee in a government department or private department finds that X person is doing some illegality, he can file a complaint with the competent authority. Competent authority will be decided. And then after he files it, full protection will be given by the government to that employee. That he will not be harassed only because he has filed his complaint. And then he will be looked after by giving the government. Now this, this law legislation also will be strengthening the hands. Now again, sometimes I, although I am for this uh, provision for removal, because when prima facie comes, Lokayak must have his power. But again, I am wondering, technical, so you can enlighten me on this, this thing. The elected representative can be removed by a speaker, by exercising his power on the provisions of disqualification or by election petition. Now this is something called third thing which comes. The trial is not complete, he is not prosecuted, but ju just because Lokayukta finds that there is some prima facie evidence against this man and he is asked to go. Now, does this provision come in conflict with the constitutional provisions. I am not very sure. I hope Santosh Shagreji can throw light on this aspect because there are methods provided for. That's why I am just expressing myself. Now, a few things regarding drafting. You see, if I say I was asked to speak on the effect on other legislation, obviously. The org I have to answer the organizers, justice is subject. Don't misunderstand me. How a bill is drafted? Conceptualized by the department concern. The department concern conceptualizes that we require legislation. Either they draft themselves or ask the law department to draft it. After the bill is drafted, it goes to the cabinet for approval. Cabinet approves it. This is all constitutional, what I am saying is constitutional procedure which is laid down. After cabinet approves, the bill is introduced in either house of parliament. And either, after it is introduced, 
it is referred to standing committee of parliament and standing committee examines the bill thoroughly and thoroughly in what sense i'll tell you it is 10 member committee is nothing standing committee hears hundreds of people delegations experts in that particular field for a month or two months hearings are taken people come express their views and then standing committee prepares his own report gives it to parliament and then the ministry accept partly or otherwise and the bill is ultimately passed this is a long procedure provided for where does the present committee fits in i am not aware we have accepted it in the larger interest of of the country it has been accepted no doubt but where does it fit in our constitutional scheme please somebody should explain i should not be mistaken i am only expressing secondly santosh ji i got very very high i not met you but i got very high regard for him i am real speaking and therefore i was privileged to meet him today i want his image to be kept intact his image is there and should be kept intact but he is by becoming member of that committee i do not think that has help i am saying it my personal view you know i will give my example not because what politician says about him no some party anybody may can say anything but you are a presiding officer of a lokayukt very highest body you are a judge how can you at all sit with the ministers they are executives you are you stand on a high pedestal your image is very high therefore sir with all the we have to forget that we have to go on but this thought sincerely came to my mind the day you were member that's why i am expressing please consider my i am expressing my feelings because i am concerned about your image i do not want you to be seen all those ministers are my minister ministers of my party still i am saying still i am saying that your image will not be glorified by you are sitting with them that is my humble opinion one may agree or may not agree then sir see there are many voluntary organizations here i always feel and i say it publicly that some service they can do because today somehow things have gone that a more corrupt a people's representative more chances of his winning this equation has been established whether one likes or not in many places more corrupt and representative of people more chances of winning this can be reduced this can be nullified if people if politicians say he will be hammered that you don't accept but ngos can go tell the people please you vote a person of your choice you vote a political party of your choice but whenever they come to you during election time especially don't ask for any donation for church temple or mosque or club please they take it this as a pretext to recover it elsewhere sometimes this job people may or may not listen to you partly i'm telling you at least 50% of the people will listen to you i'm talking of ngos if do part of job you consider this is a job please convince the people and that does not happen therefore ultimately a elected representative i make money then i throw some of them there and i'm i'm sure to win if i don't make money i don't stand chance to win this is the equation that has been established let us do away with that equation uh then i'll take one or two minutes when i refer to the uh, constitutional status of that committee this emanates from my view which has been there for quite some time which i have been expressing in parliament that i am against any legislation created by the supreme court by way of interpretation or by election commission 
by using Article 324. These two things are happening in a big scale. Supreme Court, as Chief Justice now has warned them, actually, judges, brother judges, they have warned, please don't this job, don't legislate, don't consider yourself as super legislation. But somehow, in the last 10 years, several legislations have been created in the name of interpretation. Let us also think, they may, some of them may be good. Those interpretations, I am telling you, some of them may be good. If they are good, let us incorporate in the law. But let us not waste the powers of legislature in some other body to create legislation. Similarly, if, if anybody has read Article 324 of the Constitution, it gives powers to the Election Commission to supervise and conduct election. This article was used by then Election Commission session said, this Article 324 of mine overrides parliamentary power of legislation. And day in, day out, he started writing letters to CEOs, state of view. And these letters he called as law. This practice is going on still. So Article 324 misuse and interpretation law creation has to be thought of by those who are worried about this. Let us have good legislation. Let us have now good discussions too. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Shantaram Nayak.